people have asked for more footage of our T3 and Guardian fleets, so I've picked a fight that never made it to any sort of official battle report or video or anything else. At the start of 2010, we wanted to build a lighter, low sig radius gang to alternate with the heavy toys like the faction battleships, the triage and so on. Gunny was keen on a path that was also in development in other alliances, I suppose, and later became the popular armor hack trend. But given that we didn't need to skill up or finance 300 people for the task, I wanted to push that concept to its limits right away. And I'd seen what our Wormhole Corp, Guillotine Therapy, was doing with T3 hulls to great success in the middle of 2009, when the ship class was still very new. So our gang was based around only T3 armor hulls and guardians. Low sig radius, great damage for a cruiser, massive resists, and each T3 exploiting its racial bonus. You have the Legion in both neutralizing and damage variants. The neutering version is good for running down hostile logistics, and its massive tank helps to keep it alive since it needs to get in close to use its medium neutralizers, unlike a curse for example. The pulse version has good damage projection, and the proportion of neutering to damage ships depends on how much capacitor is available on the day from the Guardians. You have the Loki, great alpha with RTs, good DPS with autos too, and of course it provides the long-range webbing to hold targets down or keep dangerous ships away from our Guardian group. You have the Proteus, the DPS of a battleship when it gets close, and a long-range disruptor. And finally, you have the Guardian. The T3 gang originally began with the popular ironclad build named after our Guardian video, but in this fight we had begun fielding the newer Caboose edition which is the Tiger Tank of Guardians sporting like a 100,000 EHP on a lowest resist of about 86%. Unslaved. To me, the way I play EVE, the logistic group is the most glamorous part of the fleet. Although the pure T3 DPS ships catch the eye, the Guardians make the fleet, and in the end, whether you have T3s or A-hacks or BCs or battleships or faction battleships, the quality of the fleet still hinges on the logistic core. Your enemy is always trying to work against you, whether it's jamming you, neuting you, trying to alpha what you're repping, or just plain trying to hit you with a big stick. No one's closer to the story of the fight than a logistic pilot. You can literally feel a fight going your way or slipping away. And of course, because you're paired up and then with redundancy groups, energy divisions and so on, being in a good guardian group is the closest you get to feeling like you're in a well-organized Roman shield wall. So those are the components, legions, Lokis, Proteus and guardians. Some years ago now we probably had the first large pure T3 fleet and that was a big advantage in terms of finding fights because it was unusual and it was new at a time where gradually the community starts to know what counters what, and therefore it becomes a mystery to hostiles. So you get fights, people go for it. And at some point I'll probably tell that story, the first months of the T3 blob. But this fight takes place much later, in January 2011, at a time where T3 are known to be tough cookies to break. Because of that, being outnumbered was already long a prerequisite in order to get a fight with this kind of gang. So let's have a look at the matchup. FCON, mostly harmless and friends, have been attacking a neutral pos. They scout us and send a bait group after us, but when they realized that we'd scouted them, they just assumed we knew about the main fleet and went back to the pos with both the bait group and the main fleet, not realizing that it was precisely the main fleet we were after in the first place. So on the face of it, the numbers look kind of bad. They have 90, we have 23. But on a closer look, it's not actually that bad. Their 20 or so battleships are mostly maelstroms and other shield tankers, so it's not as if we're against Vindicators and Balgorns or something. Their battleships are reliant on webs and painters from elsewhere to get the damage down, but they don't have many recons. Instead, their tackling takes the form, a little oddly, of a group of navy hook bills and other faction frigates from Mostly Harmless, which the Lokis can make short work of. Probably the main threat comes from their heavy weight of hurricanes and drakes, 
Their weapons will land fairly well on the Guardians, and the Canes, for example, can burn in and hold down the targets themselves. They do have a healthy number of logistic ships too, and of course we only have 12 ships dealing DPS, and a couple of those were Newting Legions. Nonetheless though, we do have the element of surprise. They don't expect us to come in and fight with only 23 guys. And inevitably in that kind of situation, in the crucial opening moments of the fight, their logistics might be caught off guard in terms of broadcasting, other reinforcements need to warp in from station and from other areas around the tower. And of course, as always in EVE, there's something to be said for pure aggression breaking the lines of the force you're up against. The fight is filmed from the perspective of my guardian. The target caller is Linas. I often designate a target caller when I'm leading the guardian group. And although the T3s are under fire at times in the fight, as you'll see, I think it's still a good example of the core narrative of an EVE battle being told from the logistic perspective. The hostiles realize that with the T3s having the massive resists and low sig that they do, that they need to break the Guardians, and it's the Guardian group that comes under fire. And the story of the fight is essentially decided by whether that group cracks or not. And all the while our T3s go rampant, cutting through the hostile fleet with probably nary a thought of how low the Guardians may or may not be going. I've let the first few minutes of the fight run at the original speed, firstly to give an accurate representation to people of the incoming damage, but secondly also because it's a fight which underlines what a beautiful looking game EVE is, when in full flow with energy streams and armor beams and the cacophony of explosions, and of course all of the brackets on and all the drones on, so you can fully appreciate the spectacle of a battlefield. Everyone should have the screen mod on and orbit something immediately. Cash. Cash in the Maelstrom. C-A-I in the Maelstrom primary. Okay, secondary will be Nolian in the Maelstrom. Cache is primary. Secondary will be Nolian and Maelstrom. User in your channel timed out. Okay, We're so gonna break him. Princess Green Nolian fleet. Okay, get, get ready to, to Nolian. Nolian is primary, as soon as it goes down, that page is down. After that, we will go for Techno General and Maelstrom. Nolian is prime, secondary is Techno General. Tertiary will be Brother M in the Tempest. Tertiary will be Brother M in the Tempest. Okay, we're about to switch to Techno General with the Nordstrom. Okay, I'm jam, take over. Techno General's time to go. It's muted. After Dirty Techno General, go for Brother M. Minions cross it. Techno General down. He's about to die. He's about to die. Okay, get ready to switch to Brother M. Brother Second. M is pointed. Secondary will be Zimmatar. Zimmatar 4 in Maelstrom. After Brother M. Crash. Crash. Oh, 
Four lamps. Primary, secondary, minimum for four. Maelstrom. Tell me once for them is down. Right, so yeah. is one down. Okay, min the core is primary. Secondary is unique to last in a moment. I'm logging in. Please invite me when I log in. Primary is min the core. Mesh, the girls on mesh, the girls on mesh. Uh, secondary is Mikolas and the Merman. Mikolas is about to become primary, it's primary now. Secondary will be Tainan in a hurricane. Tainan in a hurricane is secondary. I need Kafanka. Mesh needs to move more rep. Okay, Tainan in the primary. Kapanka. Secondary will be Lizette in a Maelstrom. Primary is Tainan in a hurricane. Secondary is Lizette in a Maelstrom. I think that's catching damage as well. Sorry. I'm ref. Login. Requested. Uh, Lizette, is, uh, Lizette is about to become primary. Lizette is about to become primary. Secondary will be Melinda, F, and the Drake. Secondary will be Melinda, F, and the Drake. Measures gem. Rep some prophecy. Our DPS is cutting through the hostiles nicely, but you can see here that heavy jamming from Falcons creates problems, and especially since we're without a smart bombing T3 that we sometimes field to deal with ECM drones. At this point, an unlucky combination of jams sinks Shani's alt Rockisi in a Guardian, although he carries on fighting with his main. Still, losing an experienced Guardian pilot in the heart of the fight is always a blow. Lizette is still yes. primary, secondary is Melinda, Frisco and the Drake. Scorpion is close. I'm in home. Rocky is still going down. Get more reps on him. Get Rocky ready reps. to Rocky. Okay, switch after that to Melinda, Frisco and the Drake. Just Secondary said. will be Capricorn and Drake. We had a new member at the time in this fight. A lovely girl, eager to try the Guardian, named Emil. Now, it turns out that Emil, despite best intentions, had been burning out a hundred kilometers in the wrong direction, and indeed continues to head out into the void for some time yet. It was her first time, of course, so we can perhaps forgive the details a little, but more fascinating is the predicament of her partner, the infamous Dirty Dirty 88, who faces the choice of staying in the fray without his guardian partner, or following her orbit out like some errant moon. And there you will be Capricorn and Drake. Melinda Frisco okay. is primary, okay. Melinda Frisco and the Drake. Secondary is Capricorn 1 and the Drake. Some Nash, I think. The no, no, no. Get ready to oh, switch to Capricorn 1 and the Drake. Okay, Capricorn one is primary, secondary is Mr. Minna in a Drake as well. After that we will go for Carl Black. Reps on mesh, reps on mesh. Mesh needs reps, yeah. Grab his cat leaf. I need to go one second and then. Capricorn is still primary, secondary is Mr. Minna and the Drake. Get him down. Mr. Minna is about to become primary, secondary will be Carl Blackheart. Dirty, 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 get reps on dirty, dirty, get reps on dirty, dirty. Mr. Minna is primary, secondary is Carl Blackheart and the Drake. To follow up on the previous intrigue, Dirty Dirty 88, it seems, has chosen duty over chivalry and remained with the pack, where he's being hammered into low armor. But what's this? Suddenly, Emil, previously 110 kilometers out, is storming back into rep range like 
Boudicca in her chariot, or maybe the Millennium Falcon, and perhaps even gets some rep on her partner, or at least lends vital moral support. After that, we will go for Hunter Black in a drink. Mr. Miller is primary, get ready to switch to Carl Blackheart in a drink. Get ready to switch to Carl Blackheart. Carl Blackheart is primary in a drink. Secondary will be Hunter Black in a drink. Lock up Montarius in the break as well. Headlong equip. Headlong. Headlong is your primary. Get reps on headlong. Dirty, give me cat. Secondary still Hunter Black. After that, we'll go for Montarius in the break. Primary is now Hunter Black in the break. Secondary is Montanius. Montalus in the break. Secondary. Dirty, Hunter Dirty Black in primary. And this turn. Yeah, I'm jammed because she's like a back. No problem, no problem. Andrew is new primary. Andrew is new primary, that grabs on me please. After Hunter Black we will go for Montalus and the Drake, the secondary. Okay, Montalus is primary, secondary um, is Kane X Kane X7 and the Drake as well. Andrew's Guardian is the last real prime of the fight. And after he was wrapped back up, the hostile fleet knew their cause was sunk. So from that point on, it really was a question of how many more we could melt. Since the real fight is over at this point, we'll play the fight out in accelerated time. Scoop your drones, scoop your drones, loot the wrecks as far as you can. Good job. The final butcher's bill stood at the loss of a guardian and a stiletto for around 40 kills.